Hey guys, so I found this great story that revisits China's cultural revolution that took place 50 years ago. So this video, uh, this news report was recorded in 2016. Um, and there were just a couple of really great overview details about um, a couple of aspects of the Cultural Revolution. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to capture this for you. And there are a couple of questions, remember, that you have to answer as you're watching. But hopefully this gives you some perspective. It gave me a different perspective um, about the Cultural Revolution, just understanding how some um, people view the Cultural Revolution as something good um, and even even though there are so many bad things associated with the Cultural Revolution, just like the brainwashing aspect of it, there are still a lot of Chinese people who still revere and hold Mao Zedong's legacy in a high regard, which is super interesting to me. So this is something that once I viewed this, it just really gave me a different perspective um, and really encourages me to kind of go off and, and read a little bit more about it to understand kind of the um, a polarity that um, this cultural revolution creates. You know, there are some people who um, see um, the good that it did, and there are some who they see the bad that it did, but yet choose to ignore it um, because they want to continue to revere and respect Mao Zedong. So anyways, I'm gonna start the video about, play it about six and a half minutes, and then I'm gonna pause it and shift to uh, like the last three or four minutes. So here you go. Old customs, old culture, old habits, and old ideas. The so-called four olds, in fact, the targets of Mao Zedong's cultural revolution. It was a campaign designed to purge the communist leadership of anyone branded anti-revolutionary or bourgeois. China's youth led the charge, forming large groups of so-called Red Guards right across the country. The trouble was, though, that the four olds were never defined, meaning thousands of historical sites and religious artifacts were destroyed, schools and places of worship reduced to rubble, public bodies and institutions wrecked. As the military and ordinary workers joined the movement, individual turned against individual. Many, particularly intellectuals and government officials, were beaten, tortured or killed. Millions of others forced into the countryside to work in the fields, many then dying of famine. Mao himself became like a cult, leading to people virtually worshipping him as a god. The revolution only came to an end with Mao's death in 1976, but it took another five years before the Communist Party finally admitted the revolution caused the most serious setback and loss for the party, the country and the people since the founding of China. Well, 2016 has seen the 50th anniversary of the start of the Cultural Revolution. And yet, in China, there's been hardly any mention at all. It's people, though, particularly those over 50, many of whom remember it well, will never forget. Well, Pierre-Philippe Berson revisits Beijing for France 24. He comes to this place almost every month. It softens his pain and helps solve his conscience. For Zheng Hongbing, the Cultural Revolution is a time of shame. 40 years after it ended, the memories still tear him apart. Mama. Mother, it's me. I've come here once again. He mourns at his mother's graveside. Every time he's here, he follows the same ritual. Mother, your son, full of shame, is bowing here for your respect. His mother died more than 40 years ago, but Zheng Hongbing still carries with him the guilt. He still struggles with the pain, even today. 
On February 13th, 1970, during the Cultural Revolution, I did something very bad that I still regret. I denounced my mother to the Red Guards just because she had criticized Chairman Mao. She was immediately arrested, sentenced to death, and executed in this park, which back then was just an open space. I considered my mother an anti-revolutionary capitalist. I wanted to protect my father and the rest of the family from her. That's why I denounced her. She criticized Chairman Mao by saying that he had not written the Little Red Book. I know I should never have denounced her. I deeply regret it. During the Cultural Revolution, China was gripped by a horrific form of political terror, all in the name of Maoism. Whoever dared criticize Chairman Mao was ultimately arrested and put through various forms of torture. Brainwashed teenagers were convinced they needed to eradicate bourgeois elements from society. Zheng Hongbing was one of them. Propaganda turned young teenagers into fanatics, bent on seeking out counter-revolutionaries. Once accused, they were put on trial in public. Before being executed, my mother was led here. The Communist Party organized a huge public trial. 10,000 people were gathered here. My mother was on a platform right here, just in front of this building. I attended the trial. I wanted to show I was a genuine proletarian fighter, a true Red Guard. Age 16 and perverted by Maoist propaganda, Zheng Hongbing changed his name to Red Flag and dedicated his life to the revolution to the point of sacrificing his family. There were soldiers who were holding my mother. They forced her to walk down the stairs. They pushed her into a car and left with her. This is where I saw her for the last time. Since the execution of his mother, Zhong Hongbing hasn't heard from his relatives. Everybody's here. That's my brother, and this is me. Since turning over his mother to be killed, Zheng Hongbing lives alone and remains resentful toward this period of history that broke his family apart. The Cultural Revolution was not a revolution at all. It was a step backwards. It brought only pain, bloodshed and tears to every Chinese family. Officially, 700,000 people were killed during the 10 years of the Cultural Revolution. But according to certain historians, the death toll was likely between 3 and 4 million. So now I'm just going to play this brief um, moment where it's just giving you an example of the Little Red Book. Three, two, one, here you go. The Cultural Revolution may have ended 40 years ago, but many people in China still feel some nostalgia toward that time. Driven by curiosity, Wang Li is going to meet some of them at Panjiayuan, a Beijing antique market. Many of the symbols of those years are still on sale at the market, including the most famous one, the Little Red Book. This is the typical model of the time, one with Mao's picture and signature. Every family had to have at least a copy of it. The book itself is a compilation of quotes taken from Mao's speeches. It was compiled in the 1960s by Mao's supporters and turned into a holy book that everyone in China had to read, including Huang Li. We studied it very carefully. We had to know it by heart. As kids, we were formatted by this. It was part of everyday life. We didn't question it. It was the Chinese Bible at the time. This huge flea market is full of curiosities from the Cultural Revolution, showing an idyllic image of a united country where everyone worked for the greater good.